Matthew chapter 26, a woman came to him having an alabaster flask of very costly fragrant oil. Now, Matthew did not name her, but John named her as Mary. And uh, she was bringing, according to Mark, the Gospel of Mark, a spike nard. And according to the Gospel of, of John, a spike nard as well. It's a very expensive uh, fragrant during those times. It cost about 300 days wages or 300 denarii. That's how expensive that was. And that uh, uh, costly, the Bible says, a fragrant oil. And she, the Bible says, poured it on his head as he sat at the table. Just imagine the culture during that time anointing somebody. And as I read this verse, I want to, I was wondering where can I find the, the Old Testament uh, re replica of being anointed by oil. You know, Jesus was anointed with, with oil, a very expensive, uh, uh, costly <coughs> fragrance. I realize that in the, in the time of Jesus, the agrarian teaching or the agrarian metaphor of shepherd and sheep plays into this verse. Let me explain to you tonight. You know, if you're a good shepherd, and if your sheep is, uh, or sheep is uh, uh, you know, goes through some bushes or thorns, in order for you to, you can't just pick up the thorns or the bushes in, on its head. It would be very painful for the sheep. That's why a good shepherd would always bring a flask or a vessel filled with oil. In order for the, for the good shepherd to, uh, when, when he tries to take out the thorns on the head of the sheep, the sheep will not be so hurt. And it will just be, um, it will just be uh, probably uh, smooth and nice to take out the thorns from the head of the sheep. The sheep cannot take the thorns on its own, or the bushes, that, because you know how the fur, the fur of the uh, sheep looks like. And so I remember when I read, I, I, I was reflecting today when I read this, uh, this verse, and I remember uh, Jesus was, was the good shepherd, because in Psalm chapter 23, David was, was uh, uh, trying to portray that he was the sheep, and, and the Lord is the good shepherd, and he said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want me to say there is no other, uh, other satisfaction rather than uh, the, the presence of God satisfies him. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down on green pastures. A good shepherd will lead the sheep to a, a green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. You know, if the water during that time is, is not still, the sheep cannot drink. Because the sheep is so a very sensitive animal, a very humble, meek animal. And so a good shepherd must find a still water where, where he needs to balance so that the sheep could, could drink. And not only that, the Bible says in Psalm 23, as he leads him beside the still waters, the sheep restores its soul. He restores my soul. And he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yeah, though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. The good shepherd is with me. David was saying, for you are with me. Your rod, you can say, you're correcting, your correction or your rescuing rod is with me. They rod, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And then, I realize in verse 7 of, of chapter 23 of Psalm, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And then the next, the next line, you anointed my head with oil. <clears throat> and I was, just, I was just trying to imagine in, the, in, in my, my mind's eyes, that this is probably the picture during the time in the agrarian ways uh, in the time of Jesus. When you anoint the head of somebody, it means that you are trying to balm the hurts. You're trying to heal the hurts. You're trying to, you're trying to uh, make it easy for that sheep, for the humble sheep.
to live. Because that humble sheep cannot do it on, on its own. And you anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. And then the, the next verse says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know, when you are distressed or discouraged or despondent or depressed, as you meditate and reflect on Psalm 23, the good shepherd takes care of the sheep. And the sheep hears the voice of the good shepherd. So this is what comes into my mind as I read this. And, and Mary, or the main woman according to the Gospel of, John, uh, of Matthew, poured it on his head. Because that is the important part of the body. As he sat at the table. And I want you to pay attention in the next few verses. As this drama unfolds, how the response of his, uh, those people who are there. Now remember, they have been seeing the miracles of Jesus. They have been seeing the... That Jesus uh, multiplied the, the, the fish uh, the fish and the bread. That Jesus healed the sick. That Jesus healed those that are uh, lepers. And Jesus healed the blind, the deaf, and the mute. They have seen the power of Jesus. And in fact, Jesus was walking on the water. And this was the time when they're all gathering and seeing somebody pouring out a very expensive oil for Jesus. Listen to the response, so to speak, of the disciples. The disciples, let's read in Matthew chapter 26, verse 8. The Bible says, but when his disciples saw it, you know, it's like, it's normal. They saw it. Wow. 300 days wages worth of, you know, fragrance just being broken for one person. They were indignant. Another word for indignant is angry. They were something, the natural tendency for them is that, wow, it was... This was not given to me. If it was given to me, I would not be angry, but it was given to somebody else. Do you have a feeling sometimes, you know, when somebody is more favored than you are, you feel something in your heart? You know, like, how come this person is more favored than me? What's wrong with me? How come he has more people who like him or her? How come he has more followers than me? Something like that in the, in the Bible times. So they were indignant, but when it probably happens to them, I was imagining in my mind's eyes, Maybe they will not be very angry or indignant. There is that human tendency in the human heart that Jesus is trying to see from the perspective of the divine that when somebody is being honored, some, somebody is not, is not happy. And this has been playing out in the Gospel of Matthew. You know, remember um, uh, in the parables of the vineyard when the workers, you know, the the, the, the workers who were hired at the last, uh, at the last uh, minute, they were the 11th hour workers, they received the same, the same wages or the same pay than those who worked the whole day. And they, the, those who worked the whole day, they complained. They said, well, we worked the whole day eight hours, but you gave the same, the same uh, wages to those who only work one hour. That's not fair. But the... But the owner of the vineyard in that, in that uh, Matthew 20 parable says, Haven't you agreed to what I, I, would, I would be giving you? A denarius for one day? Go, my friend. Take what is yours. I would like to do what I want for my own money. And so this was the, this was the scenario that Jesus was looking in the hearts of the disciples. They were not yet ready to what will be the, uh, the events that will unfold there. They think that they are, well, we are, in the, we are with the Master. We are with Jesus. He can perform miracles. He can raise the dead. He can, he can open the eyes of the blind. He can open the ears of the deaf and the mute. He can, he can do this. We are in this. But when the time when somebody honored Jesus with a very expensive fragrance, something in their heart tells, tells us tonight. The condition. They were indignant that a woman was honoring Jesus. You know, we're all probably struggling with this in our in our uh, you know in our in our Christian walk. When uh, there there's uh, there's that feeling that when uh, somebody is ahead of us, we feel a little bit uh, you know there's that there's that tendency. And Jesus wanted to to teach them an object lesson in this parable. So they were saying. 
why this waste? This is a waste of money. 300 denarius or 300 uh, days wages worth. This is just too much. Could you resonate with what the disciples are feeling? They are angry, indignant. That's a very strong word. The Bible continues in verse 9. For this fragrant oil might have been sold for much and given to the poor. Wow, that's, that's a lofty ideal, right? Give it to, yeah, this should be given to the poor. In fact, the Gospel of John tells it was Judas who said this. Not because he was uh, interested in the poor, but because he was the money keeper. He was the treasurer. And he wanted to have some money in his box. And John strongly says that Judas was a thief. But I, you know, I cannot imagine how Jesus, Jesus knew what's in the heart of his disciples. How could he ever live with Judas? And, the, and this statement is a, it's just like a slap on the face of Jesus. You don't deserve this, Jesus. This fragrant oil or a very costly spikenard or a very expensive perfume should be, should be sold and given to the poor. And listen to what Jesus had to say. But before that, I'd like to tell you something. Friends tonight, Jesus gave us a radical teaching that I myself had a hard time understanding. Why did Jesus say this? You have heard, Jesus said, you have heard to love your neighbor but to hate your enemies. You have been doing that, but I say unto you, love your enemies. This is a very tall, difficult, tough order. And he was saying to his, to his disciples, listen, this is my teaching, Matthew 5, 44. If you want to be perfect, this is how to be perfect. When you are able to, to just agape, to live with, to, to be in, in the same place or the same house with somebody who does not really, really love you. That, that is very tough. And Jesus was saying in Matthew 5 verse 44, love your enemies, agape your enemies, just like my father loves those people who, who stole the prophets, those people, those uh, children of God who, who, who criticize and mock God's people. Love your enemies, you know. In America, well, in America, driving is, is, is quite a testing sometimes when you drive here in the United States of America, especially when you're in a hurry. And if somebody's a slow poke, right, just ahead of you, you feel a little, uh, a little tinge probably in your heart. And you, but this guy is just so slow. I want, you, you wanted to, to, to uh, punk him. And, uh, uh, and, uh, and if somebody is not just, uh, you know, driving uh, the way you wanted to, to, for him or her to drive, you would overtake him and then look at him and say, hmm. And then you cut him off and then you... <laughs> and as a pastor, I was saying, wow, love your enemies. He's not even my enemies. And I can probably understand what he's going through. Maybe that driver there has a problem with him. Maybe that driver there has a pain in his heart or in his body. And I'm here, very impatient, and I want to say, hey, full speed ahead, I'm, I'm, I'm late for my work or for my appointment. Matthew 5, 44, dear beloved, if I could understand this, because Jesus showed it to me that blessed is me if I follow what Jesus is saying, love your enemies. But not only that, friends, he continued farther. He said there, bless those who curse you. Have you had the, those moments when you feel like you don't want to bless a person who curses you. You feel that they don't deserve your blessing. But Jesus was saying to, to his disciples, bless those who curse you. Do good to them who hate you. As I studied this, uh, this uh, lesson tonight, I was thinking of those people that I had not been very good with. And I said, Lord, I am not worthy. I'm probably one of those.